Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing G6PD deficiency. If you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mad Medicine, you can find our playlist for step one hematology. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day for you guys. So with that being said, let's begin by talking about normocytic anemias. Normocytic anemias are anemias that are classified by an MCV that is normal 80 to 100. And they can be subdivided based off of normal, nor, non-hemolytic, excuse me, non-hemolytic anemias and hemolytic anemias. And the hemolysis can be subdivided based off of intrinsic causes and extrinsic causes. So let's talk about some ex intrinsic or sorry, let's talk about some hemolytic anemia specifically. When it comes to the intrinsic causes, you have issues that are occurring within the red blood cell, and these can be due to membrane defects, issues with the membrane, you can have enzyme deficiencies occurring, and you can have hemoglobinopathies, issues with hemoglobin itself that can lead to an intrinsic hemolysis. And then you have extrinsic causes of hemolysis problems that occur outside of the cell, and these can include autoimmune issues, you can have issues with blood vessels, so microangiopathic and macroangiopathic disorders, and you can have uh, uh, infections that can also lead to hemolysis, especially extrinsic hemolysis. Now, one thing to understand is because your body is lysing red blood cells, your bone marrow is going to produce more red blood cells, and in the production of more red blood cells, some immature red blood cells will be released, and you will see an increase in reticulocyte count, mainly greater than 2%. Normal is going to be 1 to 2%, and in hemolytic anemias, you'll see 2%, and non-hemolytic, you will see normal uh, reticuli reticulocyte counts. Now, let's talk about G6PD deficiency. We said earlier that this disorder is mainly due to issues in the membrane. So, this is going to be an X-linked recessive enzyme deficiency disorder that leads to intra- and extravascular hemolysis because it's going to render the red blood cell more susceptible susceptible to oxidative stress. We're going to talk about that in a second, but just understand this is X-linked recessive. Very, very important because you could be asked about the uh, uh, probability of someone getting this disorder from their parents. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis and uh, how this ends up happening where patients' uh, red blood cells are more susceptible to oxidative stress. Normally, our red blood cells are in a very high stress environment. That is so true. Think about what's in your blood. There is there's uh, there's carbon monoxide, there's oxygen, there's even hydrogen peroxide, and that is the main culprit. H two O two. That is the main issue that we are facing uh, nowadays in our bloodstream. Okay, the main issue. This main issue we're campaigning against in this uh, in this in this disease. So. You have hydrogen peroxide that can lead to a lot of oxidative uh, distress on our red blood cells. But luckily, we have created a mechanism of preventing the oxidative stress, and it's through a molecule called NADPH. NADPH is produced by the HMP shunt, and it's produced via the help of G6PD. Okay, that's very important, the enzyme that is missing at the moment. Now, what ends up happening is because you have produced NADPH, NADPH is going to produce a molecule or a, called glutathione. This is an antioxidant. So NADPH is going to uh, reduce glutathione into its active form. And when it reduces glutathione, it, glutathione is going to be able to neutralize hydrogen peroxide. That's what's happening. It's going to activate, essentially, NADPH is going to activate glutathione, which is then going to attack hydrogen peroxide, and it is going to negate the effects of hydrogen peroxide. Now, if you don't have functioning G6PD, you're not going to be able to produce NADPH, and that means you're not going to be able to uh, reduce glutathione, so you're going to have a decrease in reduced glutathione, and that's going to lead to increased activity of hydrogen peroxide and more red blood cell damage. Very, very important. Now, the important thing to understand is all of this is happening because of a reason. It's not like our body automatically starts rid, uh, uh, lysing red blood cells. It's not like our body automatically starts producing hydrogen peroxide in the amounts that are going to cause this these problems in patients who have G6 deficiency, G6PD deficiency. Oxidative stress is usually going to be caused by infections, drugs like primaquin, uh, dapsone, and sulfa drugs, very, very important, as well as fava beans. 
of fava beans. Fava beans are a type of bean which end up leading to increased oxidative stress, especially in patients who have G6PD deficiency. Now, in this case, you need to know fava beans for step one because it is one of those fun facts that the examiners can ask you uh, just to test if you understand the pathogenesis behind uh, uh, G6PD deficiency. So very important, do not forget fava beans. It's only, only uh, associated with G6PD. Otherwise, you can forget it for every other, other disease. Now, hemolytic anemia is going to present after this oxidative stress. Again, you have to be exposed to some, si some sort of stress that's going to cause oxidation for this to occur. Usually, one of these three things can uh, will, be, will be the main cause of the G6PD deficiency oxidative stress. Now, when it comes to your clinical presentation, you're going to see a patient who's going to complain of hemoglobinuria and back pain. And this is going to be after they become exposed to something that will lead to an increase in oxidative stress. Now, hemoglobinuria makes sense. Your red blood cells are being lysed, and the hemoglobin is going to go through your uh, kidneys into your urine, and it's going to be uh, excreted through the urine. Now, because hemoglobin is going through the kidney, you're going to have back pain due to the nephrotoxic effects of hemoglobin. And you can also see jaundice, uh, dark urine, and anemia. So just keep that in mind. Now, while we are talking about G6PD, you should also be aware that there are two main variants. Two main variants. One is a mild form and one is a more aggressive form. So in the African variant, you're going to have a mildly reduced uh, uh, half-life of G6PD, which means that you are still going to be producing NADPH, but not as much. But that means you're going to have a mild intravascular hemolysis with oxidative stress. So this is going to be the mild form of G6PD deficiency. Now, the other form, the Mediterranean variant, is going to be the extreme or let's just write severe form of G6PD deficiency. In this case, we have a very marked reduction in the half-life of G6PD, and that's going to lead to an increase in intravascular hemolysis with oxidative stress. You don't have as much G6PD as you should, as you normally would, but a, re a reduce, a significantly, uh, a significant reduction, excuse me, of G6PD, and that's going to lead to more severe symptoms when patients are exposed to oxidative stress. Now, this is all believed to play a role in protection against plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium falciparum, aka malaria, infects the red blood cells. And because you don't really have any good red blood cells that can uh, prevent, uh, uh, um, that can protect themselves from oxidative stress, you're really not going to be able to have a infection of malaria. The malaria isn't going to be able to stay comfortable in the red blood cell because the red blood cell is pretty much being lysed when it's in an oxidative stress environment. And clearly, an infection can also lead to oxidative stress, like we said earlier. So malaria is going to lead to its own destruction in this case. Now, when it comes to diagnosis and treatment, you can use a, a Heinz preparation to screen for the disease. The Heinz preparation is going to look at precipitated hemoglobin that can only be seen because of the stain. The reason why is because degmocytes and Heinz bodies are seen on blood smear, and the Heinz preparation is used to look for Heinz bodies. So let's talk about degmocytes first. Degmocytes are bite cells right here. Like you see, this little bite has been taken out of this red blood cell. This is a degmocyte. Now, they are associated mainly with G6PD deficiency. That's very high yield. You're only going to see degmocytes mainly in G6PD and deficiency. And they're associated with Heinz bodies. Now, Heinz bodies are oxidation, oxidative uh, um, hemoglobin. Mainly, the sulfhydryl groups have been oxidative have been oxidated to uh, uh, disulfide bonds, and this is going to result in precipitation of hemoglobin. Now, the splenic, the, the splenic macrophages are going to remove this precipitated hemoglobin, and it's going to result in the bite cell. That is very important, and this is what a Heinz body looks like. As you can see, in these red blood cells, you have this little tiny area right here, right here, right here of uh, precipitated hemoglobin. This is done by looking through a Heinz preparation. And keep in mind, the Heinz body is just the sulfohydryl groups of hemoglobin being oxidized to disulfide bonds, and then they end up precipitating. Now, when the splenic macrophages take a uh, bite out of the cell, they're going to remove this area, okay? They're going to remove the area where the hemoglobin has precipitated. And when they remove that area, you're going to just get a bite cell. And that is how degmocytes are formed, exactly how they're formed. So this is going to be associated with G6PD 
as well, boom, and it's going to be associated with degmasites because the splenic, the splenic macrophages are going to remove this area and you're going to be left with a bite cell. Boom, pretty high yield. Now, enzyme studies can also be done to confirm the deficiency, and it's usually done uh, weeks after the resolution of the hemolytic episode once a physician suspects G6PD deficiency. Now, the treatment is very simple for this case. Like we said, these patients aren't just having hemolysis occurring out of nowhere. It actually happens due to uh, patients being exposed to an oxidative stress. So the main thing you can do to treat these patients are make sure they, prov they avoid the triggers. So if they're eating fava beans, if they're on like a Mediterranean diet, they should probably stop. They should definitely stop eating fava beans. And if they're on a drug that's inducing it, you want to try to avoid that drug. And if they have an infection, you want to treat the infection to make sure this patient gets better and to make sure that the red blood cells are not lysing and they don't have anemia occurring. Now that is G6PD deficiency in a nutshell. Mainly you have issues with G6PD and because you have issues with G6PD, you cannot reduce glutathione and you're going to have more oxidative uh, stress from hydrogen peroxide leading to hemolysis. You want to watch out for infections, drugs like permaquin, dapsone, and sulfa drugs, and fava beans. And when it comes to treatment, you want to look at avoiding those, uh, those triggers. And when you're diagnosing these patients and you look under the microscope, you're going to see Heinz bodies with the Heinz prep and you're going to see degmocytes and the degmocytes are happening because the splenic macrophages are removing the hemoglobin precipitated Heinz body. And that is pretty much all you need to know for G6PD deficiency. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. New videos every day, every single day. You can follow us on Instagram at mad.medicine and on Twitter at It's Mad Medicine. And you can listen to these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.